Let's now turn to the mounting fear over coronavirus and how that is challenging leaders in Washington, sparking economic turbulence and changing the face of the 2020 campaign. Tensions are evident inside the Trump administration as cases of infection continue to rise. President Trump and Dr. Anthony Fauci met with drug company executives this week, and Dr. Fauci did not echo the president on the timing of an available vaccine. We're working very hard to expedite the longer process of developing a vaccine. But if you're talking about three to four months in a couple of cases and a year in other cases, uh, wouldn't you say, doctor, would that be about right? A vaccine that you make and start testing in a year is not a vaccine that's deployable. So he's asking the question, when is it going to be deployable? And that is going to be at the earliest a year to a year and a half. President Trump signed an $8 billion emergency funding bill before Friday, before heading to Atlanta to visit the Centers for Disease Control. Joining us now is my colleague Yasmin Abu Talib, health policy reporter for The Washington Post. Yasmin, where are the cracks inside the top ranks of this administration as they deal with the crisis? I think you've seen the president has still sought to downplay the risk of the virus, even as we've seen the number of cases in the U.S. climb over the last week and pop up in more than a dozen states. Um, I think Vice President Pence and the health officials who are briefing the public have been pretty clear that they expect to see more cases, but they still believe the risk to the American public is low. And then you have President Trump, who has sought to say that a vaccine will be available sooner than Tony Fauci has said it will be, um, and that, you know, he's even questioned the mortality rate that the WHO has put out about the virus based on what we know so far and the cases that we know of. And what do you make of Vice President Pence's handling of everything so far? What are the reviews like with your top sources? You know, so far, I think even from some Democrats, Vice President Pence has gotten pretty good reviews. They feel that the government is trying to give them the best information. Um, I think there are still some people who wish that a medical and scientific professional like Deborah Burks, who does a report to Vice President Pence, was sort of running the whole response and was able to overcome bureaucratic hurdles and make the decisions necessary among departments. But so far, I think we've seen the government ramp up its response in the last week, week and a half, you know, try to scale up the level of testing and really start to prepare and um, plan for the outbreaks that we're starting to see around the country. Talking about the government's response, who drove that $8 billion deal on Capitol Hill? What made it come together so quickly? I think there was pretty quick bipartisan agreement that more money was needed to fight this. And, you know, lawmakers and the public have been watching the virus sort of pop up all over the world over the last several weeks. Um, you know, it's it's not a secret that it's a very contagious disease, uh, that it presents mildly and that makes it harder to contain. And you saw pretty quickly when the administration rolled out its initial request for two and a half billion dollars, that lawmakers said that that was not sufficient. Even traditional allies of this administration said, you know, I think you're lowballing this. This isn't the time to cut corners. Let's just really put the resources we need forward. And you saw both sides come together pretty quickly as soon as that supplemental was rolled out to say we need more money and let's just make sure we're, we're putting all the resources we need forward. Yasmin, stay with us. We're taping this live at 8 o'clock in Washington on Friday night. And talking about the Washington response, Jonathan, as we're taping this program live, President Trump has announced that Mark Meadows, uh, the North Carolina congressman, will be his new chief of staff. So you see the president, as he deals with this crisis, is bringing in a trusted political loyalist and Mark Meadows, someone on on Capitol Hill as he navigates this all. A uh, shakeup during a public health crisis, one that I think a lot of us saw, saw coming a while ago. There's been speculation for months now that, Me that Meadows was going to leave uh, Congress to become the president's chief of staff. But it does show, I think, the difficulty of this president in retaining personnel. He's gone through a this number of fourth chief of chief staff, of, fourth chief of staff um, more commerce directors than I've got probably fingers on, on both hands, um, and a number of other staffers uh, have sort of gone through the um, the merry-go-round. And I think uh, it's not clear how Meadows will appreciably differ from Mulvaney. Similar profiles, conservative hardliners from Capitol Hill who offer the president basically reassurance. He's not somebody, Bob, that I think you could say would challenge this president. Yeah, Abby? I, I think the one way in which they differ is it's that Mulvaney... Food. Yeah, I mean, Mulvaney has lost the president's 
uh, you know, confidence for some time now. They don't have the best relationship. And so uh, to the extent that Mark Meadows has a better relationship with President Trump right at this very moment, uh, I think that that will probably improve uh, the dynamic within the White House. And But, I mean, on the one hand, this is an incredible amount of turnover at a time when there is a lot of need for stability. But on the other hand, an uh, impotent chief of staff is a huge problem for this White House. The, pr right. the president needs to be able to effectively communicate and manage his staff at this moment. So if Meadows can do that, you know, that might be actually the best thing for the moment. The two key words, Abby, right now. He has the right trust now. of the president right now. And Yasmin, having Mark Meadows come in as chief of staff has a political hand at the president's side. And the president has been lashing out at Washington Governor Jay Inslee and other Democrats as he deals with coronavirus. What does Meadows' entry into this White House uh, mean to you when you look at how the White House and the administration are moving forward? Well, we've known from our reporting that there are uh, some of the president's advisors who are really worried about what this outbreak means, not just as a public health crisis, but as a political crisis, and does it pose an existential threat to the president's reelection? We reported earlier in the week that, you know, with Vice President Pence's office taking over, they're insisting on message discipline, not just among administration officials, but public health and medical professionals as well, to make sure the administration is speaking with one voice and not veering from sort of agreed talking points while trying to be as transparent with the public as possible. And I think that shows that, you know, they are really concerned about the political risk that this could pose to the president. And they want to make sure that, you know, they've got an eye on re-election while trying to manage this crisis at the same time. And what does it mean for the Democratic race, Abby, when they look at what Yasmin just mentioned, the president putting all of his chips on the stock market at times politically? Does it mean more Democrats will move to Vice President Biden, a seasoned hand at this time of unrest? It could potentially uh, mean just that, that Democrats will be more nervous to put someone uh, up as their nominee who they're not confident has the experience to deal with a crisis like this. You know, the reason this is going to become a uh, potentially an existential political crisis for the president is because the economic consequences globally and in the United States uh, are going to be severe. I mean, we're seeing already an enormous amount of disruption. And uh, it's not just the stock market. It is, uh, you know, hotel workers and airline industries. And uh, that's a real pro concrete problem. Uh, it's not just a political one. It's one that the president will face. But the Democratic uh, nominee is going to have to be able to answer questions. Can they steady the ship? Some people have likened this to the sort of uh, post 9-11 uh, world or even the sort of 2008 financial crisis in, in in the sense that uh, there's going to be a need for uh, someone to be able to say, yes, I can come in here and uh, and write the, write the ship at a really precarious time for the country. Yasmin, Abby just mentioned air travel. Are you expecting to see more restrictions on domestic and international travel for, you, for American citizens? You know, Vice President Pence actually came out this week and said, you know, domestic travel is safe. Um, and I think there is concern about hurting the economy too much, but there's a lot of fear. We're seeing a lot of events around the country get canceled. We haven't heard of further restrictions plan at this time, but this is fast moving and decisions are made quickly based on information that's available. So it doesn't mean that can change, but there are pretty, um, you know, uh, restrictive travel restrictions in place right now. And I'm not sure we're going to see more imminently, but it doesn't mean that could quickly change as this all evolves and officials learn more information about the way this virus is spreading and where potential hotspots are. Jonathan, in 30 seconds, the back to the Meadows pick, the big news Friday night as this show goes on. Does it mean political war? This is a fighter inside of the House right. of Representatives coming inside. Well, he's not somebody that's got a lot of deals with Chuck Schumer, Bob. <laughs> Let's put it that one on Capitol Hill, I think it's safe to say. But, you know, even beyond Democrats, you know, Meadows is not somebody that has a great relationship with Mitch McConnell, who is the sort of consummate establishment figure that Meadows is not. Um, so, look, I I think it's he is a sort of wartime type general. He is somebody that you want to fight with, not that you want to cut deals with. And fighting is what Trump is going to do for the rest of this year during his reelection. But just real fast before we go, President Trump is not going to take the blame for this virus getting worse. And the people around him who he's appointed to yeah. oversee this are the ones who are going to take the blame. And that's something to keep an eye on here in the months yeah, ahead. That's why you if see this them. does get worse. Final quick yeah. thought, Adam. That's why you've seen them going out of their way to praise him effusively at all these events. Everyone's really nervous that he's not going to cope well with the inevitable uh, ballooning of the, of the crisis as we go along.